Welcome everyone to this webinar. In my part of this presentation, I want to briefly introduce the topics that we will cover in the training program to give you a sense of what kind of activities you will be involved in, what kind of topics you might apply bioinformatics to, and how will we structure this program. And then I'll pass it on to um, another team member to talk about the structure of each session, what is going to be covered when, how to register for the specific program, and what to expect. So when we speak about bioinformatics, uh, typically the background of the majority of the people related to bioinformatics is in research. And in research, primarily the focus of bioinformatics is to understand what is in the data and link it to a specific phenotype so, so that we can characterize a very defined process and find links to the application. And then bioinformatics in medicine has to do with taking that research and applying it to diagnose and treat specific diseases. And in this program, we're gonna focus on several different diseases. One of them, and a major cause of death in the United States and around the world is cancer. So uh, cancer was the second leading cause of death um, in the United States uh, or in the world, sorry. And uh, primarily it affects Western nations, but it is uh, affecting more and more developing nations as well. And uh, the study of cancer has led us to, first of all, kind of identify specific genes that are responsible for different aspects of cancer development and progress. And then eventually today, more and more studies focus on a much greater detail of how the systems biology of cancer can be used to treat and uh, help people even by preventing cancer. So to understand cancer progression, we need to understand that healthy cells, as they develop, eventually some of them lose uh, some mechanisms of restriction uh, that uh, cause uh, those cancers with damaged DNA and all kinds of unwanted processes to proliferate uncontrollably and even spread throughout the body. And so when we speak about cancer and uh, stages of cancer development, we're speaking about the onset of cancer, when these cells start to appear and there's a tumor, and eventually spreading throughout the body, and that is what we call metastases. And what's important to address this problem to really treat cancer a critical part of that is screening and identifying the risky populations and then within those risky populations to identify the onset of cancer. And so what people have been doing to understand these mechanisms at the biological level is identifying markers of cancer risk and translating those markers of cancer risk to uh, strategies for screening and early diagnosis of cancer. Now, a lot of that relies on modern technologies like next generation sequencing. And what people have found is that next generation sequencing can allow us to understand what happens in the cell using the same technology, but monitoring several different critical molecular processes inside tissues and cells. And co collectively, we call these uh, data types generated by next generation sequencing uh, omics. And these omics data can be applied to different levels of what happens within the cell on aggregate, for example, in a whole tissue, or specific to an individual cell. And that's where we have single cell technologies like single cell genomics, single cell transcriptomics, etc. And so when we uh, try to understand how these technologies can help us detect what's happening inside the cell, one of the ways to use is to measure transcriptomic, uh, transcriptomic signals. And those signals are a good proxy for what we will call as the functional component, the proteins that are being produced within the cell. Here's a good example. In breast cancer, uh, there is a, a specific receptor on the surface of the cell called HER2. And uh, that receptor is responsible for signaling that communicates with uh, inside the nucleus uh, how to produce uh, specific growth hormones. And that is one of the causes of this unproliferated growth. 
Well, to measure proteins on the surface uh, is not very practical. Uh, and so people have used transcriptomics to identify the gene that expresses HER2. And that gene is ERBB2. And by looking both at the level of expression and alternative splicing of that gene, we can identify potential responders to treatment. But these kinds of strategies focused on just a single gene have essentially been evolving. And so what we see within different types of cancer, like for example, breast cancer, we are seeing that the classification of cancer continues to expand. And it continues to expand based on a growing number of marker genes like HER2 and an integration between those genes, which is the molecular classification, but also multiple other factors like even proteomics and metabolomics. And that's why we see this uh, conversion between research-based bioinformatics and clinical use uh, of bioinformatics, where this kind of understanding of what happens at the molecular level is actually critical for accurate classification of an individual patient or a group of patients, but ultimately also for selecting a treatment that is more likely to work and be effective for that individual. So as a result, bioinformatics for clinical use relies on big data of various types that is integrated and ultimately is being used for diagnostics and therapeutics. Now, what's interesting is that not only is this data being used for patients, but essentially we are seeing a number of experiments that are not possible on actual human patients. And so another major challenge in these kinds of studies is to be able to accurately represent what happens inside the patient's body by using animal models of human disease. And so when we will explore the role of bioinformatics in precision medicine and examples of bioinformatics applied to data sets, we will use both clinical samples taken from patients, but also animal models like uh, patient xenograph models where a tumor is grafted inside the animal to study those biological processes, but also to try and uh, intervene using a variety of compounds. And that essentially leads us to this uh, kind of big data paradigm in uh, molecular studies, where we have uh, kind of a, 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 an approach of using data to inform our hypotheses and essentially then being able to model a specific process and apply that process to actual treatment of patients. And that leads to shorter discovery and validation timeline, higher success rate, and lower costs. And these are really the objectives of precision medicine in terms of their actual clinical use. Because if we were just to take all of the data available about the patient and use that data for every single individual, it is just simply cost prohibitive. But if this kind of collection and analysis of data is informed by large scale studies that then can stratify patients and determines which ones are likely to benefit from this approach, then it leads to actual improvement in outcomes, uh, more efficacy, but also uh, lowering costs overall. So in this program, we will benefit from those large studies that have collected systematically uh, data about different types of projects. And so as you can see on this chart, uh, the growth in the amount and availability of data has been exponential over the past uh, couple of decades, actually. And today we have access to um, smaller studies and larger studies. And one of those studies related to cancer is called the Cancer Genome Atlas, TCGA. So what's unique about this study is that they have been able to collect uh, systematically from different uh, locations and in different types of tissues and cancers, uh, a huge collection of thousands of individuals um, that comprehensively characterizes their genomic 
transcriptomic, proteomic, and even metabolomic profiles, allowing us to search through the clinical data that are associated with risk factors and outcomes and even treatment and determine how we can use this data both at the clinical and the molecular level to better understand this complex disease. So one of the studies that we will look at is how such multi-omics integration and analysis of molecular profiles has led to a new understanding of complex diseases based on multiple types of omics data. But the TCGA project is already not so new. So I think it was started in 2013, so it's been around for quite some time. What has happened since then? Well, more recently, a new study called All of Us Research has started making their data accessible as well. And so there we have, uh, the objective is to have over a million individuals that represent both different kinds of conditions, but also help us understand the variability of healthy individuals. So another source of data that we will look at and we will try to see what kinds of cohorts are available is the All of Us Research Hub. And I think for all of you that are coming from a research background, this is an exciting new opportunity to try and understand and develop preliminary hypotheses based on this data about those topics that you are interested in. Another interesting project that we will look at throughout this program is the NIH Human Microbiome Project that exclusively focuses on characterization of metagenomic sequencing for human microbiome, both for, for healthy, clinical, and preclinical individuals. It's an exciting uh, project that has grown over the years. Today, we have the Human Microbiome Project 1, Human Microbiome Project 2, and the project continues to evolve with specific focuses and actually is going to be a part of the All of Us research as well. In addition to these large repositories, we will also look at several examples of uh, publications that have leveraged animal studies or cell line studies to accurately represent patients and test different assumptions, both about, about molecular characterization of patients, but also on testing and response to different types of treatments, both those that are already on the market and those that are still being evaluated in clinical trials. Now, when you think about all of these different data sets and the skills that you might need to have to address some of the interesting questions that you could answer with these data sets, you might feel overwhelmed. And this is understandable because there are so many different tools and packages and methods, including statistical analysis, machine learning, and deep learning. It is difficult to envision one to be able to go through all of that, learning from scratch about the important questions, the data sets, and all of the tools. And so for that reason, what our team has done is worked with the Tauber Bioinformatics Research Center that has developed a user-friendly version of all of these complex algorithms that one can learn to use and understand the logic of analysis without being hindered by the technical complexity of each one of these methods. So the platform offers a user-friendly interface. On this interface, uh, there are color-coded paths or pipelines that you can reproduce accurately and get easy to understand and use visual outputs that speak to the biology that can be found in this data. Included are several different pipelines and utilities that you can use to work with this complex data, be able to understand and mine it, and especially uh, we will use curated data sets that allow us to deploy standard or conventional machine learning techniques to explore and understand variability, defining groups of patients or uh, uh, specific gene sets that can identify individual patients. Now, what we'll do is we will look at this through the lens of case studies. And we will uh, try to use uh, data from the types of uh, studies that I already mentioned, like cancer, human microbiome project, or all of us research, but we will also incorporate some ideas from the infectious diseases where an important trend 
has emerged over the past several pandemics or epidemics in the past couple of decades. And those include such outbreaks like Ebola virus outbreak in uh, West Africa in 2014, 2016, uh, different types of understandings of the disease, uh, the pathogen interacting with uh, the host and understanding responses to those uh, markers, but also using microbiome and infection, which will allow us to appreciate the role of multi-omics integration and bioinformatics in those kinds of studies as well. So what can you expect as a result of going through such training? The real outcome is a project. Not only will you be able to listen to lectures from experts that will highlight some important aspects of current and traditional development of bioinformatics in different applications, but you will also be able to design a project that highlights and showcases to the world what you are able to do with these kinds of skills. So specifically, we will talk about the application of such tools for clinical decision making, where we will look at such applications like patient stratification, disease classification, identification of potential responders to therapies, mechanisms of disease onset and progression, and the way that such tools are used in both pharma and biotech early biomarker discovery, detection of toxicity at the in vitro stage, analysis of molecular mechanisms of a drug action, and drug repurposing or repositioning. So these kinds of topics are impactful and can be very meaningful, whether you are a student and you would like to demonstrate what you have learned and how you have been able to use data to ask and answer some of these complex questions, or they could be useful for your research where you're interested to get into this field, you would like to improve your skills, but ultimately you would like to try and see how they work in real life. Throughout the program, you will be given access to some of the tools that I already mentioned, but we will also rely on RStudio and BioPython to analyze data sets and write the code, uh, maybe simply by modifying it or actually writing it from scratch. And to do that, our portal that uh, Sri Gauri already showed to you and you have enrolled in uh, offers a number of uh, kind of uh, guided processes to help you understand the link behind the logic of the analysis, the syntax of the code, the different curated data set examples that we are going to look at, and uh, practicing that code so that you can ultimately become independent. And as a result of this, you will be able to accumulate a repository of your own uh, code that you can essentially use in the future for your own research or for whatever situation you will come across in your future career. So here are some learning outcomes that we envision for this program. I think that you will learn to appreciate and understand scientific literature that describes analysis of various types of omics data, including genomics, transcriptomics, metagenomics, and others. You will know how to perform basic processing steps for such data with consistent accuracy. You'll be able to perform exploratory analysis and generate a hypothesis from data. You'll know how to design contracts, contrasts for statistical tests and prepare data for machine learning. You'll be able to annotate found signal using biological databases and references. And you learn how to identify appropriate data sets for answering a specific biological question. As a result, you will learn and be able to plan a bioinformatics analysis from start to finish completely independently. And we will offer an opportunity to present your final project proposal, including the rationale, the methods, scientific background, and anticipated results to an experienced mentor that will be able to provide you with feedback. I'll finish with this testimonial of a previous participant her name is Olga Odartseva, and she was the research affiliate, a postdoctoral student at Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center. What she said was that the program is very well structured and easy to follow. The skills that she gained through the program helped her significantly enhance the relevance of her research by making connections between the preclinical study and its practical application to cancer patients. So with that, I would like to pass this on to Dr. Mohit Mazumdar, who will speak about some of the program resources, the outline of the different sessions, and all of the topics that will be covered in those sessions.